So you should see my screen and this presentation. Give a shout if you cannot see it. Okay, so what are we gonna talk about today? First, we're gonna talk about how we use Create React App today in the DHS2 app platform. Number two is why we're move, moving, why we're moving away from using Create React App and using Vite. We'll talk about why, why are we using Vite? Uh, there are other options out there. So why did we choose Vite? Uh, where we're at now. So like, where, where are we in the mig this migration process? Uh, some good things about changing to Vite that hopefully will make the development experience much better for all of you. Some breaking changes or, or things that you need to keep in mind. There are a few very edge case things that you need to think about when you do this upgrade. And then where we want to go from here, how we want to uh, continue to improve the app platform uh, and build on this work to migrate to Vite. So when the app platform was first built, it was about five years ago now, maybe a little bit more. Um, we used Create React App under the hood just to make it very easy. That was the, the standard way to build a React App at that time. Um, and we basically create a create React app that wraps your application and we put it into the, the shell directory in .d2 in your, um, uh, in your application. And then we copy the app into that uh, create React app and build the, um, the application. Then finally, we run the React scripts um, tool, which comes with create React app to start or to build uh, your application with the shell around it. Um, so we'll be looking at ways to improve this in general, but this is how we use Create React App today. But why are we moving away from Create React App and why are we moving towards Vite? So Create React App is no longer maintained. Um, it's got a number of security warnings. There's a number of things that just are no longer maintained by the, the team there. Um, there's Babel warnings that come up when you install or you use one of the Create React App scripts. Um, some things that are out of date are no longer maintained, uh, and we want to move to something that is maintained and that has some more um, of the, the future-looking features that we want. We also want to uh, have a little bit more control uh, and a little bit more flexibility in how we actually build these applications. So Create React App is very opinionated in that you can't, uh, by design, you can't override or change a lot of the configuration. And there are some things, particularly when we're talking about the service worker or progressive web apps, that we do want to change uh, in to make the applications better or the, the we don't agree with the way that Create React App did it. And uh, for DHS2 applications, we need to do it a different way. Um, service worker is one of those. Another one is having multiple entry points. So if you want to build an application that also has a plugin, Create React App doesn't support that out of the box. Uh, and it's something that we want to enable with the platform. Um, we also want to move to something that is faster and has more modern features. So like I said, Create React App is no longer maintained and uh, it needs, yeah, it, it, it's, it can be a little bit slow. It has some features that are a little bit out of date. So we want to move to something that's a little bit better. I did hear someone uh, talking. I don't know if um, if you raise your hand and then maybe Renee can interrupt me if uh, um, if there's something you want to say. Feel free to jump in with any questions if you have any. So now why are we moving from Create React to, to V? There are other options out there and we want to uh, pick one that makes sense, that's uh, going to make sense for a long time going forward and that uh, has the the features that we want and the, and the things that we want to um, introduce to the app platform. So a few of the other op uh, options are full stack frameworks like Next.js or Remix. Um, and these are great frameworks. They're really, really powerful. But because of the way that DHS2 web apps work, they're not full stack. So we wouldn't be able to give the, the full uh, kind of uh, power of Next.js or Remix um, in uh, the way that the application platform currently works. Uh, and even if it was full stack, these are also fairly opinionated frameworks. So it, it kind of locks people into doing things a certain way. Um, 
another uh, alternative set of alternatives are kind of lower level tools like ES build, which is a very fast way to build JavaScript files. Um, Webpack, uh, which you probably have heard of, that's what Create React app uses to bundle up uh, the different assets and, and build the, the end uh, resource bundle for the web application. And Rollup, which does something similar. Um, uh, there's some differences there. Um, these are great. Uh, Webpack is a little bit complicated, a little bit older. Um, Rollup has a lot of good features and a lot of good plugins out there. ES Build is is very modern and very fast, but they're a bit lower level than I think what we wanted to to provide here. And um, we would need to use, for example, ES Build and Rollup um, in order to make this work, or uh, Webpack, which has some of the disadvantages of being a bit heavier weight than than these other tools. And then there are some other tools that are at a similar level to Vite. Um, Parcel is one of those uh, that's very um, well known. TurboPack and Snowpack are also um, ones that are out there, kind of um, uh, successor to Webpack. Um, and these are great, but there's uh, some advantages in, in our testing. And, and Kai um, could talk a lot more about this as he did a lot of exhaustive testing of these different options. Um, but Vite provides us with a better user experience, better broad support from the, the larger community, the ability to have uh, a lot of flexibility in the configuration of the uh, of Vite so, so that we can do the things that we want. Uh, and so that's why we landed on Vite, which is under the hood, it uses ES build and rollup, which means that we are using ES build and rollup, we're just not using them directly, we're using them through Vite. Um, and that's uh, why we chose Vite, and we think that it's the best choice of the of the uh, JavaScript builders and bundlers that are out there, or transpilers and bundlers that are out there today. Okay, so where are we now? And this actually is a little bit uh, a little bit out of date. This slide, so I, I can I'll talk a little bit more when I give a demo about the. Um, uh, some of the things that have been updated a bit since since then, um, but most of this still stands. So we've released an alpha version of the app platform on uh, the CLI app scripts library with the alpha tag. I'll show you how to um, test that out or use it uh, in the near future. Uh, and we're getting close to, to actually releasing this. So it should be kind of ironing out some of the last kinks, adding a few uh, helpful features there as well. Um, but uh, getting close to this being released as version 12 of the app platform uh, without needing the alpha channel. Right now it handles apps, but not plugins. So that means that uh, for the moment, um, if you have a plugin and application in the same uh, app, it will build the app, but the plugin will still use uh, the, the system that was there previously. Uh, it is ready for testing. So like I said, I'm going to share how you can uh, install this alpha version and start to use it. Uh, and we'd love to get your feedback and hear, uh, hear how it goes. So what are some of the advantages if you do upgrade to this new version of the app platform? So hopefully, hopefully all of you will. Um, and it's very minimal breaking changes. So I'll, I'll get to those in a minute. But the idea is that you shouldn't even really need to know that there was great React app before, and now it's Vite. It should everything should just work. Um, so, what are some of the advantages that we get by moving to Vite under the hood for the app platform? First is that it's much faster. So, it can take quite a long time for a big application to build uh, or to run in dev, in dev mode the um, uh, an app using create react app um, Vite is very very fast um, so that's a huge advantage that we get uh, right off the bat and hopefully that'll be a very big positive for for all of you I know that it is for for our developer developers um, much better interactivity in the CLI when you're running build or or start um, you can uh, restart very easily from within the the uh, the terminal where you started your your application you don't have to shut it down and then start it again. You can reload things. Um, it's quite uh, um, a more intuitive developer experience there. 
And this also enables a lot of future features for us, such as being able to build multiple plugins, being able to share um, uh, share code between plugins and applications, so you don't have to download a megabyte of JavaScript code for each one if they if they have common code that is shared. Uh, we can do code splitting and bundle splitting in a way that lets you share code between those two things, uh, and much more. There are some changes that you'll need to make in your applications in order to use uh, this new V process, but they're pretty small and maybe won't even affect a lot of people. The first, and this is the probably the biggest change, uh, is that Vite, um is is quite opinionated in wanting uh, making sure that if you have JSX, which is like the the HTML style bracket notation that you're probably very familiar with if you write React code, uh, if you have JSX, you need to use a file extension with .jsx or .tsx. So not just put it in the .js or the .ts file. Um, there actually is a way around this. So in the initial version, we have the option to um, uh, to ignore this requirement. Um, but for very big applications, that means that the the Vite parser needs to go through all of the JS or TS files and look for JSX or TSX or uh, JSX syntax, convert that to JavaScript or, or TypeScript, and then run the, the build. So it can be a little bit more expensive if you have a lot of files. Um, this way, if you change the extension on the files that have JSX in them, then it will uh, basically, it'll only need to do that transformation on those specific files and can be much faster. Um, but like I said, we do have kind of an escape hatch uh, in the initial version of the app platform where we allow you to uh, skip this requirement and say, just look at all of the .js or .ts files and do the transformation on all of them, um, knowing that that might have some performance uh, uh, downgrade. We do also have a migration script. So we're inc including in the new version of the app platform, a migration script that will automatically go through your source files, find any files that have the JSX syntax in them and automatically uh, rename the file to use .jsx or .tsx on the end. Um, so we will in the future, uh, stop having the kind of the workaround where we'll allow .js or .ts files to have JSX syntax in them. Um, and uh, initially we're not making that a hard requirement, but in the future we don't wanna have kind of maintain a way that's different than the way that V um, does under the hood. So we will be moving to, um, to that at some point in the future, but we do have a migration script that makes it very easy to do that. And I'll show, I'll show how that works in uh, the demo in a few minutes. The other breaking change, um, which may affect some people, is that you do need a minimum uh, node version of either 18 or 20 or higher. Um, hopefully, people are on modern versions of node or can upgrade pretty easily, so it shouldn't shouldn't be a huge issue, hopefully, for most people. But uh, you do need to upgrade your node version if you're running on node 16, for example. Uh, and then the last one here, there is a change in the way we handle environment variables. Um, this moves to a more uh, uh, web native or browser native way of doing it uh, rather than the node native way, which is using process.env. And so the old way to access um, environment variables that were passed to uh, your DHS2 application were to use process.env to dot react app DHS2 var. The var is, is depends on what which variable you're talking about. Um, this prefix React app was added by Create React app, so obviously that's something that isn't necessary anymore. Um, and VHS2 is something that we add, uh, so that basically makes sure that you only have, uh, you can't, uh, yeah, it's a security mechanism for uh, different environment variables not accidentally leaking into your, your code and, and causing issues. Um, the new way to do that is to use import.meta, which is a browser API that uh, um, uh, many uh, build, JavaScript build tools are extending to have the .env um, uh, option. And so then you do import.meta.env, and then you only prefix it with DHS2. You don't need React app anymore. 
uh, and then your, your variable name. Um, so you should migrate your process.env uh, access to import.meta. Um, we, we, we will support the process.env uh, uh, as a backwards compatibility for some time, but we want to remove that at some point in the future. So you have some time to do that migration as well. This also, uh, uh, and most, most people probably aren't doing too much environment variable injection. So maybe this won't affect you at all. Um, and probably even fewer people are overriding the index.html file. Um, and affect, if you use the percent uh, variable name uh, in the custom in a custom index.html, you will need to update that to uh, to use a different syntax. Um, will which we can share in a in a longer blog post. But again, this is something that probably very few people are doing. If you are, we'll have a a, a guide for how to how to migrate those um, those variable names. And that's it. So those are the only kind of breaking changes or deprecations that are. Uh, that we've found or that we know of in the this migration to Vite. Everything else should just work. Uh, and again, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, but it's very cool that basically because the of the way we designed the platform to be, uh, uh, to kind of hide the details of what's going on with the build of the app, um, it shouldn't matter to the application developer that much what is actually happening under the hood. Uh, it should be pretty simple just to upgrade your React app, your, your sorry, your uh, D, D2 app scripts version, and then everything should uh, work fine and you get the advantages of using a new tool. So where do we want to go from here? Um, number one, like I said, uh, currently we only build apps with the, the with Vite, uh, we do want to upgrade or uh, update that to use uh, Vite for plugins as well and do things like um, code sharing and bundle splitting between plugins and apps. Similarly for libraries, right now we use uh, we use just um, uh, what do we use? Um, yeah, we don't use Webpack or, or Babel at the, or we use Babel, but we don't use uh, Rollup. So right now we just use Babel. Uh, we'll move libraries to using Vite as well, just for consistency. Um, probably most people aren't building libraries with the app platform, but we build a few uh, with the app platform. Uh, and so that'll be something that we want to support in the future. We also want to move to a new world where we're not uh, it, doing this weird thing where we create a shell in .d2 slash shell put the application code in there. Uh, we want to build directly from the source files that are in your application uh, and make sure that the shell is available as a global thing uh, across the DHS2 platform. So that's something we'll also want to do in, in the future. And actually, Vite makes this easier for us to do than Create React App did, because Create React App was very uh, opinionated and very specific about how it did things. Uh, we also want to explore uh, moving to vtest instead of jest for uh, unit tests. Um, we think this is faster and, and just more consistent way to do um, testing, uh, but that's something that we haven't explored yet. And then we also want to explore the possibility of, of making it uh, easy to extend the vt config if you're using the platform so that if you're uh, doing something that is uh, a little bit different than maybe the, the, the default DHS2 web apps. Uh, you can update Vite with some plugins. There's many, many plugins out there or some different configuration and, uh, and still make it, still let it work uh, for you as developers. Okay, before I get to the demo, do, I, I've seen some chat come in. I haven't read them yet, but uh, does anyone have any questions? Or Renee, do you want to um pass on any questions that have come up um <clears throat> only one about environment variables but i think that's answered right now uh, okay yeah um i and anyone can unmute or raise your hand uh, if you have a question at the moment or put it in chat if you don't want to speak up Any questions, any uh, concerns, any excitement? Gift, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Gift, you should be able to unmute, I think. Yes, hi. Hi, Austin. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for this update. Uh, I see there is a lot of improvement on this area. I just had a um, question uh, specifically about um, Yan and the relationship with the app platform. Hmm. So one of the issues that I encountered when, when using the app platform is I can't use any other packet managers. I can use NPM, but I can't use PNPM. Uh, I think part of it is because of copying the folders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to know if uh, the update has any effect on this. Um, I think the answer is not quite yet, um, but with this number three where we handle the shell without copying, that should uh, clean that up quite a bit. So right now we require yarn in the shell, which is uh, has uh, a link back to some of the dependencies from the application. Um, and that requires the node modules to be set up in, in the, the standard node NPM way. Um, but if we move to a mechanism where we are not requiring the kind of doing that dependency update ourselves uh, and doing the build directly on the application rather than copying it into the shell, I think that will address the, the issue with um, using different package managers than Yarn. Uh, we also want to explore just making it less less restrictive in that sense. So hopefully in the future, uh, near future, uh, but uh, for now, this this update shouldn't have any effect on that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, maybe just an additional question sure. um, about the uh, are there any changes with the uh, React version? Um, React, yeah, so uh, actually Mozafar is uh, working on that as we speak. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully in the uh, in the very near future we'll be upgrading the support to React 18, so you can um, use the latest versions of React. Um, and yeah, right now we're on 16.8, I think, is the is the carrot version that we require. Um, but that'll be changed to React 18, which has some again shouldn't be a huge issue for applications to update. There are some breaking changes that you need to address if you're doing unit tests in different ways. So you'll need to think about that, but um, that should be supported by the platform in the near future, um, probably in the next month or so. Okay, uh, thank there you. Are a couple. Thanks, thanks for the questions, Gift. Uh, there were a couple other, um, couple other questions here maybe. Oh yeah, thanks, Mozafar. Sharing that. Yeah, did you want to add anything about React to 18? I didn't realize you were on the on the call here today. Um, no, just uh, yeah, it should be there soon, like you said. Uh, yeah, so you can follow that PR that I posted. Uh, gift. Yeah. Um, I think that's yeah. Setting up how to how to set up things would be a good session to have. Might be a good thing to schedule, Renee. Um, just to have kind of even uh, point. Uh, we can also point to some of the um, the, the uh, events that have been reported and the documentation that we have on the developer portal as well. So thanks for that comment, Ahmed. Um, yeah, you might also see that we're we're kind of moving a bit a bit faster on some of these things, uh, and we'll be doing quite a bit of work on uh, supporting extensibility and um, uh, application development in the DHS two ecosystem. Um, the reason for that is that we have a new team that is focused just on this. So in the past, we've had a number of different people from different teams working on these uh, tools and this. Uh, support for the developer community, both uh, in terms of the, the tools that we build, the app hub, the app platform, the, um, the way we do uh, app management, all of those types of things. Um, and we now have a team uh, with Renee and with Mozafar and with uh, Kai and with several others uh, in the DHS2 core team who are working on this uh, all the time. So it's going to be, hopefully you'll see some cohesive kind of um, plans coming together and, and moving forward with support for 
the things that make it easy for you to extend DHIS2. That's web applications, but it's also beyond web applications, integrations, um, backend services, things like this, um, that we want to provide some, some good guidance and also really good uh, core tools to be able to support that. So hopefully that's an exciting thing that you'll hear more from that team uh, in, the, in the very near future. Okay, so I wanted also to just do a quick demo of this. So I have here a, a, a web, a DHS2 uh, web app. Um, it's just a very, very simple one that I created uh, using the rinit script. Um, so you can see it's, it's just a standard uh, DHS2 web app. We have uh, app scripts, we have app runtime, um, and that's it. Uh, we have uh, very basic D2 config. Uh, and uh, in terms of the actual application, pretty simple, but we have our app.js. We say, uh, use some uh, utility function from another file that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and then we say, hello, DHS2 developers. Um, that utility file just gets this Steve Vollmer quote, which you all probably are familiar with, um, and uh, puts that into the, um, the JSX here. So I just want to show that this works. I'm going to go ahead and yarn start it. So this is using the existing uh, version of the app platform, which is version 11. Um, you'll see that there are some warnings here, including things like create React app is no longer maintained. Um, there's some, some warnings that are not super pretty, um, but it does work. So this is using the existing version of the app platform. We get that quote, developers, 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 and then we have a subtitle that just says, hello, DHS2 developers. So hi, everybody. Um, this is from, from my little app to you. Um, yeah, pretty simple. It's just a standard DHS2 application. Um, but I want to show how do we uh, update to test out the new Vite uh, script uh, or Vite build tool here with App Platform. It's very simple. So we're going to do yarn add. Uh, and we're adding to dev, dev, dev dependencies, so da, dash dash dev, dhs2 slash CLI app scripts. So this is the same thing we have here, but I'm going to add at alpha at the end here. So this is just going to download and install the alpha version of this package. So that comes through. Now we have this uh, alpha version of the CLI app scripts package. Um, and now all I do is I just do yarn start. So you'll see it's already started. It was super, super fast. So it's already started, it's already available, and we have it up and running. Nothing else changed, everything just worked, right? So uh, I also can see some of this better um, interactivity for the, uh, in, the, in the command line. So I can actually do this, and I can see that there are some things that I can do while the, while the app is running. I can restart the server, I can open it in the browser, I can do all of these different things. So there's there's quite a bit that you can do, um, that Vite provides that you can do now from the command line as you're running the, the, the dev server. And we can also do yarn build, which will be very quick again, uh, and it will build the output for this um, application. It also now lists out all of the chunks that were created uh, and their sizes. So you can see that there's some that are a little bit bigger um, and ha have even a warning. We're going to work on ways to uh, better kind of streamline some of the build process to make these chunks even smaller. Um, but this helps to uh, ensure that you are aware of what, what kind of what artifacts are being made during the build process. But that went very fast uh, and it just worked. So we didn't have to do anything special. We didn't have to delete any files or, or uh, clear the cache or anything like that. We just upgraded the um, CLI app scripts version to version 12 and then, uh, or sorry, version uh, 12 alpha. And then it works uh, with Vite running under the hood. But you'll notice that uh, I do have this app.js file uh, that has some uh, JSX syntax in it. Um, the version that's currently on alpha doesn't just allows that. Uh, and in the future, would uh, we would remove that, that uh, capability. 
but there's actually a version that hopefully will be uh, added soon that I'm just going to demo to you as well. So I'm going to use a local version of the B2 um, app scripts for this. So I'm going to go and do this and say yarn start, D2 uh, app script start, sorry. Whoops. And you'll see uh, that we have JSX syntax not enabled here. So that's not, that's not allowed. Um, there is a way uh, to get around this. So we can also do it with build and you'll see the same thing. Um, so you'll see that this shows that the JS, uh, JS syntax, um, if you're using JSX, make sure you have a file with the JSX or TSX extension. So two things we can do here. We can do allow, J, uh, let me see if I make this right. Let's do, see what the options are. We have this option, which will allow, uh, go back to the, uh, the basically the workaround where we allow JSX and JS, and then it'll just work. So it'll work with the JSX in those JS files. Um, but this is a, like a little bit of a hack, right? So it's something that we want to remove in the future. So we yes, ideally I'm want to awesome. use this yeah. option yeah. To, uh, to move a, move our JS files to JSX files so that we're actually using the syntax in the files that are named that way. So we don't want to do that. But we also have a migration script that we can do. So this will be available. It's, it's already, actually already available in the D2 app scripts that's published. So we do D2 app scripts. There is now, if we look at the help, we can see that there is a uh, migrate option. So if we do D2 app scripts migrate, you can see help again, see what, what migrations are available. We see that we have this JSX JS to JSX um, uh, option. So if we say JS to JSX, what this will do, it'll go through our source files and it will change the, it will find all of the files that have JSX syntax in them and it will change them to JSS, JSX files. Similarly, if it's TS uh, TypeScript files, it will change them to TSX files. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's it. So you'll see on the left here, instead of app.js, we have app.jsx. Uh, and that means that we can we have this JSX syntax in, inside of that file. But you'll note that this utility file that I created earlier, utils.js, it doesn't have any JSX syntax inside of it, so it doesn't get changed to JSX. So it's still just a JS file. And that means that when Vite is starting to run and migrating or, or uh, transpiling from JSX to pure JavaScript, it doesn't need to look at this utils.js file, which maybe is very, very big, um, and it will just look at the .jsx files. The reason that this also can be very expensive if you use the, uh, the escape hatch of allowing JSX in JS is that it also has to to search through all of the uh, node modules files as well. So it could be quite expensive. But now that we've done this migration, so you'll see that it also, this app.test.js was changed to app.test.jsx because it has some JSX syntax in it. Um, now that we've done that, we can do this build without this allow uh, JS in JSX uh, uh, option. We can run, we build it, and it works. And that built using the uh, using Vite, uh, it didn't use any kind of special handling for you allowing JSX in JS files because we did that migration. Uh, and now when in the future, um, at some, some future version of the app platform, when we remove the ability to allow JS in JSX, you don't need to do any migrations and you're kind of complying with this, the, um, the best practice uh, in, in a lot of modern tooling to uh, specify JSX when you're using JSX syntax. And that's it. So now we have an app that is running uh, with um, Vite. It's very fast. You can see that it works just the same as it did before. Uh, we've migrated our files from JS to JSX where we were using JSX syntax. Uh, and you'll see that 
yeah, basically everything is is working this the same way it was before. Obviously, if we were using a environment variable, exit for example, if we wanted to uh, do something like this. So let's say we wanted to say take this from a an environment variable. Previously, we would have said process dot env dot something. So it in the in the previous version, this would have been React app. DHIS2 name. So we're just going to say like uh, dev name, call it that. So in order to do this, right, if we do this now, we see that it shows nothing. It also hot reloaded. So I changed this file. It automatically reloaded the my app. Um, it didn't have to do anything. That's an uh, improvement over some, sometimes that was, wasn't as uh, reliable as it could be in previous versions of the app platform. So now I have this dev name, but I don't. I'm not getting anything from that, so it's it it shows nothing. Um, we can now change uh, add this environment variable. So um, I'm going to say Kai in honor of Kai, um, and we will say yarn start. Oops. Ah, we have to do this. I'm going to have a problem with my demo, of course. I think this should work, but we can also do uh, this one work. Yeah, so this is one that's built in. I'm just going to use that for an example. I'll, I'll update the example to test with other environment variables. But this uses uh, the app name. So we're, we, we're in, our app name is called test app. Um, you'll note that this still works, even though we're using Vite. Um, this still works with test app. Um, but I can also do it this way. And I get the same thing. So we can see that this doesn't work. This does. I don't need the React app anymore. And I'm moving to import.meta instead of process.env. Uh, again, in the future, we will probably migrate away from supporting process.env um, to support only the, the more modern standard of import.meta. Um, right now they both work, but you should, if you're introducing a new environment variable, you should use something like this instead. And I believe this will work if I get rid of the React app. Yep. Uh, yes. Okay, so that, that does work uh, because I had already upgraded to um, uh, Yarn or sorry, to, to the, the Vite version. I don't need the React app um, prefix anymore for my, my variables. That's why it wasn't working before. But I have this DHS2 dev name. I said Kai, yarn start. And now I have uh, this saying, hello, Kai. And it's actually baked into the code for this particular application that has been built.